All right, trigonometry A. Let's take a look at the solutions to this worksheet. Uh, so number one, in a right triangle, one angle measures x, where the sine of x is 4 over 5. What is the cosine of 90 minus x? So right away, I see that we're talking about complements. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm going to use the idea that that complements are going to be equal to each other. So if I kind of sketch this out, and the sine of x degrees, well, let's just put, you know, x degrees right here. So the sine of x degrees is 4 over 5. And remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is your opposite number, and this is the hypotenuse, all right? So if the sine of x is 4 over 5, well, the cosine of 90 minus x, 90 minus x would be this angle right down here because that's going to be 90 take away whatever x is. And the cosine, remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the adjacent over hypotenuse, well, the adjacent leg is also 4 over 5. So the big idea here is that the sine of an angle and the cosine of an angle should be equal to each other. So the answer is going to be 4 fifths. Now you could punch it in as 4 slash 5 when you bubble this in. 4 slash 5, or you could put in 0.8 or 0 0.8. Um, any of these answers would be acceptable. All right, number two, um, looks like we have a Pythagorean triple here. We have our 5, 12, 13, and then we have some triangle to the right of that that's scaled up. Uh, don't really know what the factor is, um, but it says that they're similar to each other. So what is the value of the cosine of E? All right, so cosine of E. So the first thing is the cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I'm standing here on E, the cosine of E is going to be this leg, the leg next to me, which we'll call little f since it's across from big F, and then over the hypotenuse, which we'll call little d. All right, so cosine is going to be little f over D. Well, it should, since these two triangles are similar, it should be the exact same ratio as if I was standing on B. All right, since they're the same shape and the same, you know, same uh, angles, it should be that the ratio should be the same. So that ratio is going to be 12 over 13. So the correct answer here is going to be B. All right, number three. Triangle ABC, the measure of B is 90. So let me kind of sketch this out. So we have triangle ABC, and B is the 90, so that's important. Uh, B to C is 16, and A to C is 20. Uh, DEF is similar. DE and F correspond, so you got to put it kind of in the same order. So D, E, F is kind of like his, his brother. Um, and it's one-third of the length. So basically, to get from this triangle over to this triangle, everything is divided by 3 or times by one-third. So you're shrinking all these sizes down. And ultimately, they want to find out what is the value of the sine of F. All right? Well, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I'm standing on F, you know, if I, if I want to know what the sine of F is, the sine of F is going to be this opposite leg, so it's going to be this side over the hypotenuse. All right, so we want that left leg over the hypotenuse. Well, to get the real numbers, I got to use the triangle on the left. The problem is I don't have this side. Now, I do have the hypotenuse. Maybe I should color code these if this is blue because this matches this blue. I don't really know this. I'm going to call it little c. I don't know that side, but I do know the hypotenuse is 20. So we have part of our answer, but we got to go ahead and we got to find out what little c is. Now, there's two ways to do it. You could use the Pythagorean theorem. You know, you could say leg squared, leg squared, hypotenuse squared. So c squared 
plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. And you could go through and you could solve that. That wouldn't be too bad. Um, C squared plus 256 equals 400 minus that 256 from both sides. This was supposed to be plus. Minus that from both sides, you'll get C squared equals, what's that, 144. And then take the square root of both sides, and you'll get C equals 12. So C equals 12. So now I know that that's 12 over 20. Sine is going to be 12 over 20. Now you can't bubble in 12 over 20 because there's only four spaces to bubble available. And you would need one, two, three, four, five spaces because you have to bubble that slash in there. So you're going to need to reduce this down. If you divide both the top and bottom by two, you'll get six tenths. So that would work. You could bubble in six slash ten. Um, or you could put the decimal, six tenths. Or you could put 0 0.6 for six tenths. Or you could even go further and do it again and get it down to three fifths. All right, which is also 0 0.6. So any of these answers would be fine. Um, something you could have done, though, early on, instead of messing around with the Pythagorean theorem, all right, so let's just say that I didn't really want to do all that. If you could remember your ratio, you remember that 3, 4, 5 ratio that we talked about in the notes? If you kind of can remember the 3, 4, 5 ratio, you'll just see that this shape was actually the big brother times by 4. He was actually scaled up by 4. So that was scaled up by 4. So we could have just scaled the 3 up by 4 and got the 12 a little quicker. I always like to look at the 3, 4, 5 or the 5, 12, 13. And I always check really quick to see if I could scale up my numbers um, before doing the Pythagorean theorem work. It's not that big a deal, but it does save you a few seconds. Okay, number four. The angles above are acute, and the sine of A equals the cosine of B. All right, well, let's, let's digest this. The sine of angle A must be equal to the cosine of angle B. Well, the only way that can happen, the only way that's true, is if A and B are complements. Okay, remember, complements mean that A plus B equals 90 degrees. That's the only time that the sine of a number and the cosine of a number are going to be equal to each other is when the two the two things add up to 90 degrees. So they give me some algebra here, and they say that angle A is 4K minus 22. So I'm going to write that here. I'm going to substitute 4K minus 22. And then angle B is going to be 6K minus 13. 6K minus 13. And then I know that they're, they have to add up to 90 degrees. So A plus B equals 90. And let's clean this up a little bit. Let's combine some like terms. So we have a total of 10 Ks here. Then we have a negative 22 and a negative 13, which is a negative 35 equals 90. Solving for K, we add 35 to both sides. And we're going to get 10 K is a buck 25. Divide by 10, divide by 10. Or move the decimal over, one to the left. And we get the value of k to be 12.5. So tougher problem, but not too bad if you kind of understand this whole complement piece here. Very important. They like that. Number five, triangle above, the sine of x is 0.6. What is the cosine of y? All right, so again, sine of x, cosine of y. All right, we know that when you have the sine of one angle and the cosine of the other angle, they're going to be equal to each other. All right, so if the sine of x is 0.6, the cosine of y is also going to be 0.6. So again, we're looking at complements here. Remember, it could be 0 0.6. It could be um, any fraction that comes out to that. It could be 3 fifths, anything like that. Um, Moving on, number six. Uh, the figure above, tangent of B is 3 quarters. BC is 15. DA is 4. 
So one thing you want to understand is you have similar triangles going on here. Um, because these two 90s create some similar triangles. So I'm going to do this little fella right here. I'm going to kind of split them up. So we have B, we have D, and we have E. And then I'm going to put the whole thing over here. And we have B, and we have A, and we have C. So I'm just kind of redrawing the two triangles. And we know that the tangent of B is 3 to 4. So when I'm standing here on B, remember tangent is opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So tangent of B is the opposite leg, which is going to be right here. So that's the 3. And then the adjacent, the bottom number, has got to be right here. So we're kind of looking at our little 3, 4, 5. Now, it may not be exactly 3, 4, 5. It could be a bigger brother. You know, the tangent of B, 3 to 4, it could also be true that we have 6, 8, and 10. But when you reduce it down, you're going to get um, 3 over 4 still. So either way, it's going to come out. But let's just kind of keep moving. If B to C is 15, all right, and D to A is 4, so that's not on either of my pictures, so I'm going to put D to A is 4. What is the length of D, E? So we're trying to figure out how long D, E is there. All right. Well, just by kind of looking at the scale, you know, I have this 5. That means this is scaled up um, over here to 15. So having a similar ratio, this got to scale up by 3. So this is going to be 9. This side's got to scale up by 3. So that's got to be 12. So if this whole piece here is 12, right? this whole side over here is 12, and they told me that the red piece was 4, then that means that this piece actually here had to be 8. So it wasn't exactly a 3, 4, 5. It was double that. So it was actually 8, 6, and 10. So we now know the true length of DE. The true length is 6. A little bit tougher problem there. Number 7. Uh, in RST above, point W, not shown, lies on RT. What is the value of the cosine of angle RSW minus the sine of WST. All right, well, let's just kind of put, let's put our own W on there. It says W is not on RT. Let's just slap W on here somewhere. And let's see what they're talking about. The value, we want the cosine of angle RSW. So angle RSW, RSW, that's this angle. Okay, that's, that's that angle. And then the sine of WST, well, WST is that angle. Now, what do you notice about these two angles? Those two angles, all right, let's just call them, let's just simplify this and let's just call them A and B, all right? Those two angles add up to 90 degrees, all right? A plus B makes a 90 degree angle. So they are complements. And again, we know that two angles that are complements, uh, the cos of one and the sine of the other, have to be the same. So we know that whatever this value is and whatever this value is, they have to be equal. So when you take some value, all right, whatever this value is, and you subtract the exact same thing, you are going to get an answer of zero. Because the cosine of this angle and the sine of that other angle are equal to each other. And anything minus itself has to be zero. So that's your correct answer. Number seven, triangle PQR has a right angle of Q. So let's bust this out. So triangle PQR has the right angle of Q. Sine of R. So if I'm standing, R is my... My reference angle here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So opposite of this guy would be here. Hypotenuse of this guy would be here. Now remember that just because the sine is 4 over 5, it doesn't mean that the triangle is exactly 4 and 5. It means it could be any ratio scaled up from there. So some other things I need to keep in mind, you know, it might be double that. It might really be 8 and 10. Or it might be triple that. It might be 12 and 15. Or it might be quadruple that. Or it might be 1.5 times that. All right, you could even go four times one and a half and five times one and a half. There's a lot of sides that'll give you the ratio of four to five when you reduce them. Um, but I see four and five and immediately I think of three. All right. And so now it says, what is the value of the tangent of P? So they kind of switch gears on me and they're like, hey, what's the tangent of P? So that means I want to put my guy up here at P this is where I want to stand so the tangent remember tan is opposite over adjacent so when you're standing here this is going to be your opposite and your adjacent is going to be the leg right next to you so the correct answer the tangent when standing on P is 3 over 4 so you're going to want to bubble that in as 3 slash 4, 0.75, 0 0.75. But I wouldn't mess with my calculator. I would just do 3 quarters. Number 9, sine of x equals a. What must be true for the values of x? And I'm looking through, and immediately I start seeing these 90 minuses. So I'm thinking complements. So if the sine of x is a, I know that the cosine of 90 minus that x is also going to be a, all right? The sine of some angle and the cosine of his complement are going to come out to be the same. So looks like correct answer here is going to be C.